Uh, hello, my name is Alicia Kaczmarek. I'm a, a director of Centrala Space. We are a creative um, a space art gallery and music venue based in Birmingham in the UK. And we are hosting the series of discussion about Brexit with uh, fellow arts and cultural organizations. So uh, today I have three lovely guests, all female this time, uh, joining me to discuss uh, Brexit uh, impact on the organization and also residencies. Uh, so uh, maybe we'll start with the in introductions. Uh, if we can maybe start with Klimene, uh, if you could just tell us a few words about yourself and your organization. Well, hi there, everybody. I'm just going to very quickly share some pictures. We're a visual arts organization and I find it quite hard to describe what I do without showing some pictures, if I may. So we are a visual arts organization. We're based in Newcastle in the northeast of England. Um, I'm very involved in European programs and we have also very recently set up uh, a, a, a sister organization in Cyprus to maintain an EU base. So we can maybe talk about that a little later. I'm just going to very quickly in one minute take you through a journey of one of our artists. So our current Creative Europe program, which we are leading, is looking at our shared colonial history across Europe. Um, and an example of one of our artists, so the idea, of course, is that the, most of Europe, much of Europe, colonised much of the world to so this rather shocking map that we see in front of us of the impact there. So the story of one of our artists is Aquila Bertram. So she's our UK artist. And we sent her to Lac in Portugal, which is a wonderful space in the south of Portugal. Portugal, of course, has a very long colonial history and, and Lagos in particular, where this space is based, was the first slave trading port. Uh, Aquila produced a piece of work as part of her residency in response to the slave trade and in response to the monument that had been created for many years, uh, naming Henry the Navigator, who was one of the first slave traders. The programme also went to Barbados and it's going to end up in Cyprus as a festival in the mountains in 2022. We're now delayed. So I'll finish that there and I'll answer more questions as we go through it. Okay, lovely. Uh, so can we go my, uh, now maybe to Hannah? Yes, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Hannah and uh, my background is as a uh, production manager for performing arts and uh, since two years now uh, I'm working at Transeuropal as a project manager. Uh, Transeuropal is a European network of grassroots uh, cultural centers. So it's uh, independent cultural centers mainly based in uh, former factories. So we have around 126 members in 36 countries uh, all around Europe. Right, thank you. And Claudia? Yeah, hello, I'm Claudia and I, um, I have been until very recently, in fact, until yesterday, uh, running Devon projects uh, um, <laughs> for the last 25 years and have handed it over to a wonderful woman called Natalia, uh, who might be listening just now. But um, so anyway, I'm the founder of Devon Projects, which is a residency program here in the very north of Scotland, between, and we are some halfway between Aberdeen and in Inverness. We do not have a, a, a centre, uh, but we call it the town is the venue. So the, the town of Huntley is about 4,000 people, and we really use the infrastructure of the town as if it was an art gallery or a, a performance centre. And here we have had artists from literally all over the world, um, I think in total from 36 countries or even more by now. And, um, and um, that is for us very important to sort of work with the context of the place being really local as a, at the same time as really global. And um, yeah, in, in terms of Europe, um, we feel quite strongly about it. We had a, a, a long program called Brexfest. We did that uh, for two years. Uh, every month or what, always looking at the local European level for things. One was on tourism, the next one was on local politics, the influence on health, the influence on education and so on. And we have done a number of other projects like for the most important one is we on Brexit day itself, we uh, with an artist from Berlin, we have planted a weeping willow, which is a kind of monument to the day of Brexit. Mm. And then myself, I've done a project because I was very 
uh, very upset at the time with Brexit. And then my uh, board at the time said, why don't you just be an artist for a while and take a uh, time off? And so the artists normally come for three months. And what I used my myself those three months to walk home. So I walked from my home here that, that I lived for 25 years, home to home to, I walked back to my mother, which is near, is near the Austrian border basically. And uh, so that was also a Brexit related uh, project. And we've done quite a lot of other things that sort of, um, and the, now we are really looking into what the possibilities are um, um, to set up a Scottish cultural initiative, sort of an alternative to the British Council. And that's the kind of uh, um, things I'm still busy with, mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> Yes, sounds sounds you uh, uh, you were concerned with uh, Brexit for um, uh, for a very long time. So uh, could you just uh, tell us a little bit more uh, because uh, you had um, uh, as you're saying residents from all over the world. So how is uh, have you noticed an impact yet uh, of Brexit on uh, on residency programs? Well, I. <laughs> I can't say this right now because I mean, obviously we're only three months in and with the COVID, it wasn't so easy to program for this year anyway. But I'm very aware that for example, that Weeping Willow program, we did, the artist came in and out for two years because he always wanted to plant it and then Brexit was delayed. So then we couldn't do the planting. So we had events at, on the dates where Brexit was planned. And then he came in and out and in and out. And that just would simply probably not be possible anymore. Where have we have felt it, which I haven't talked about yet, is we have a very thriving internship program. And so we always match, uh, we have two interns, one British and one Erasmus intern. So they come also for three months and they have been from Greece, from France, from Italy, from, uh, uh, you know, from Germany and, and many different countries. and. It is such a healthy program for us to, to bring, to have this exchange between young British uh, practitioners and, and the European practitioner. So that is something we feel. The other thing is we had um, so-called leader funding mm -hmm. with this uh, rural development funding. And we had that for many years. So that is also drying up, of course, and I don't, no, nothing has been uh, announced whether uh, the Scottish government is bringing us an alternative or something. But now with COVID, there's always a good reason to tell us, well, there's no money. <laughs> so um, Yes, definitely. I do understand that uh, the landscape and environment we work in change very much. We, uh, we're pretty much weeping <laughs> for Europe uh, here at Centrala. We focus on Central and Eastern European art and culture. We all uh, Europeans here and very pro-Europe and uh, uh, thinking uh, in, in European, um, you know, perspectives all the time. We've lost our Erasmus interns. Uh, this, it was like great asset for us and great opportunity to have this connection with Europe. So we feel those losses uh, already despite uh, maybe COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, um, uh, yes, and we, to be honest, we have lots of uh, anxieties about the future once the, the lockdown is over and uh, we will want to return to the, the usual and because we bring artists from Eastern Europe, not only from EU countries, but also from outside of EU, but together with Brexit, also the immigration system in UK changed. So we have two different things here. So it's like, uh, in theory, people from outside of Europe should not experience any change, but there is, there is new new immigration and new requirements for for artists uh, so the residence is longer than this minimum of free visa will be probably difficult mm -hmm. uh, maybe if we got um, Klimani, if uh, if maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit more because you run so many european and international projects so i'm just wondering has anything already changed or in any relationship with your partners or is it it's been changing, Alicia, for four years, five years. So ever since this was announced, it has flavoured how we do what we do. It's flavoured the preparations for, for what we do. So has anything changed since January? I guess we've got a little bit more of an idea of what we still need to do, whereas this was still uncertain right up to the last moment. Um, we have international programme, which is happening, of course, because of COVID, things are delayed. 
Um, but we will have artists traveling to Spain, to Portugal, to Cyprus over the next year. So this has meant we've had to do a lot of preparation to understand what the work permit, what the visa conditions are. Uh, we are doing this research ourselves with as many colleagues as we can draw in, and we have brought in an intern from the University of Newcastle to support that work very much in the field of visual arts and residences because there isn't that kind of research available yet. So understanding if somebody is there for a research residency, are they working? What does that mean in Spain? What does it mean in Portugal? What does it mean in Cyprus? If they're taking their artwork with them in their pocket, is that the same as sending it by aeroplane? It's super, super complex. And each country will need to have its own file for us to understand what that means. So the impact at the moment has been the work. Um, in a way, we are lucky because we have three live examples of projects happening, so we can drill down some very specific questions that we need to find the answers to. So this is very practical now for us to do it. Um, in terms of the costs of the programming, this is going to have an increased cost because we, for artists coming in and we have exchange programs, we will have to think about sponsorship and things that we haven't thought about before. So. The whole process of mobility is, it's exhausting, it's, uh, it's, it's costly, and we, we cannot be the experts. And at the moment, it feels like there are no experts. You know, there is nobody who's focusing on this. So that's the mobility side of it. The other side of it is, like you, you both talked about Erasmus, we've also had Erasmus placements in the past and they've been wonderful. But for us, the Creative Europe programme has been a main part of our programme for of oh, 15 years or more now. So to lose access to that program has been uh, heartbreaking. So our program Contested Desires was one of the shorter um, cooperation projects. It was always our ambition to make it bigger. This subject of colonialism is more than a small project's worth. There are many European conversations to be had. There are many conversations between the Global North and the Global South to be had. So we always wanted to expand the project. We are going to expand the project, but as a UK participant, we can no longer have a central role. So that is very difficult. There isn't, I mean, it's, we will find a way through it, but it's just upsetting that that is the situation that we find ourselves in. The UK government has not provided an alternative in the UK for Creative Europe. They have provided a sort of alternative for Erasmus, but not really. It's, it it's, doesn't allow people in, it just sends people, students out. So again, we're, we're, we're taking these first steps. It's, it's a lot of effort and a lot of research. And we often feel that in the space where we were quite confident to operate, we're having to learn how to do it all again. Mm, I, I share, I share your um, anxieties and, 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 and feelings. It's, uh, I think it's the frustration of not knowing and not having any resources actually. And uh, I think organization like us who would like to work internationally, we just left on our own. Uh, uh, and I think this lack of support is pushing us to play it safe. It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, and especially if we have like, for instance, our budget is like four year funding from Arts Council, for instance, we cannot change it halfway because, because of the Brexit and include kind of legal advice for, for the visa requirements. But I understand that you had to research each country separately because I understand if you decide yeah, well, I mean, if we're sending if we're sending UK artists out to other countries, it's it, there isn't a single European solution for this. It, it falls onto each national government, and everyone has a different approach. So, some places they already have dispensation for artists to not have work permits, for example. Others are freer around their visas. We have this ninety day travel that we know about allowed within one hundred and eighty days. But it's very unclear whether we are working or not in that period in our field. If we don't do a performance, are we therefore working? If we're just researching, are we therefore working? If we are paying the artists from the UK, do they need a work permit in Spain? It's, it's everyone has their own rules that that for, you know we're not being really experts in 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 you know emigration immigration. So we're having to learn the language and we're having to learn how to navigate it and we're having to almost do a translation process of what these heavy governmental documents mean, not just in the UK, but also luckily enough, our intern is a fluent Spanish speaker. So she's able to go directly to the sources of information in Spain, but you know, we don't have Portuguese speakers and French fluent speakers in the same way. 
Yeah, that's uh, uh, unfortunately, I, this almost sounds like uh, unless you have some direct links, links in, in the country will be impossible or very difficult to organize a resi a residency. Our worry is that uh, uh, it could put people off to work with the projects for in, I don't know, Eastern Europe or maybe uh, countries with uh, um, less infrastructure around this. Um, uh, but that's, yeah, the future, but may maybe with, uh, with the time we can. Um... I mean, the thing that I just quickly add to that, Alicia, and, and it's, we find ourselves having to become the experts yeah. with our partners, because if they've been used to working with European artists, they're not used to thinking about these issues work permits and the rest and visas. So often we're having to, to find the information so we can help other people to still work with us. Yeah, so it's it's, it's burden on, on us. Uh, so we, we already have increased cost of Brexit mobility. We lost interns, placements. We don't have support, we don't have information and we have to work harder to keep the partnerships working. That's that's that, that, that's, that's quite a lot strain on, on organization and maybe smaller organization. Um, uh, I'm sure the large institution with legal teams might be, might be better off. Um, and uh, how about you, Hannah? Because you work, you operate as a membership organization. So you have members in, in, uh, in all over Europe. So have you noticed an impact or what's, what's the most concerning for you in, in, in these areas? Uh, I wouldn't say that we have noticed any impact uh, yet. I think we can expect it in half a year or so or, or in the next few months that the, that the real impact uh, will show. Uh, but I think also, as we have already said, that uh, one of the main concerns are the administrative things with visa, work permits, customs, all of these things. And of course, that uh, the, the UK or members in the UK cannot take part in, uh, in the Creative Europe program, for example, uh, as they used to, uh, nor in the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, we, uh, I'm project manager uh, of a project called Spaces of Transformation in Arts Education. Uh, we have a lot of members who uh, work with arts education uh, activities uh, in different forms. and. Uh, this is funded by Erasmus Plus, and we have one of our members uh, in the in Belfast, in UK, uh, that is uh, part of this. And uh, we applied for this the very last round. Uh, so, if we would wait half a year uh, more, uh, they it wouldn't be possible for them to uh, participate in uh, uh, in the project. Great. Um... Thank you. It's uh, um, I understand because the people, yeah, the, if uh, if they applied before, they can continue the project. So, uh, so that's uh, still good that we've we've managed this partnership. But the later on, I su suppose that uh, not having access to Creative Europe would be big because it was the, if I'm not wrong, the largest source, the largest resource for European projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so you came, my 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 lose. Uh, participation. Um, on our previous conversation, we had various uh, membership organizations like Culture Action Europe and um, European Network of Cultural Centers. So we had uh, received a lot of reassurance that all those network organizations are still very happy to work with the UK and UK-based organization. Uh, so uh, I'm sure in the principle that's that's also that, that's fine and uh, and people will make an effort, but. Uh, uh, looking for how much adaptation and changes we all have to take. It's uh, it's worrying what's going to happen. We have to deal with COVID at the moment, uh, and and the limitations. So so we yet to to really see the see the impact. So um, uh, we've um, we we can see that how sending artists abroad will be difficult. But uh, but do you think um, uh, accepting uh, artists like in Scotland, in the UK, in England, uh, do you think we will have less artists coming here? Well, if I just can chip in here that I hope we will not have less, but it will be much more work for all of us. And therefore, um, uh, I mean, when I'm talking about what we <laughs> here in our place, we wouldn't have less because we were de would be determined. And I know my successor as well is determined to make it happen. But a lot of energy will go that we, we are also quite used to um, inviting artists from Africa. Okay. And therefore we have a sponsorship license and uh, it, ha it is notoriously difficult and you have to be determined to, to want to do this. 
And I imagine more all over the country that more and more people feel um, put off by the by the administration that they face and the costs that they face. And it's just, if it is so much harder work, sometimes you just feel compelled to do what is easier for you because we're busy enough, aren't we? And I think that's the danger. And the same is for artists going out, especially artists, um, musicians and people who, that has not so much to do with residencies, but people who normally used to go in and out on just for a few days for a performance. And so that is going to be extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And this is the same for us uh, receiving artists um, to just get uh, artists in for, for short visits. Um, it is hardly worth the effort. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have to fill all this paperwork. Yeah. Well, I think it is going to get easier uh, in that there are organisations and agencies working on our behalf to try to make it simpler. And uh, Wales Arts International with On The Move have been leading on creating an info point for, for the UK, which is specifically about artists coming into the UK with the idea that if we had a question or a query, we can go to a single point of information. And that's a fantastic thing that we are developing. Other countries do have them. I know they have one in France and Portugal, for example, for coming into the countries there. So that is great. Um, so I think that will get easier. I think in terms of some of the sector, so the musicians seem to be much quicker on this subject than the visual artists have been. So there are a number of support, sex of support networks or agencies from the musicians side of it, which seem to be producing some really good information. Um, the visual arts I know are working on it. So CVAN, the Contemporary Visual Arts Network in the UK and AN Artist Newsletter are collaborating on, on a piece of research, first of all, with the idea of having a resource available maybe early next year so we're just caught in this moment now where we're none of us really understand or know enough yeah so there is some hope so it sounds um uh, sounds good uh, we have to survive this year uh, it doesn't mean that we like it though alicia <laughs> there may be hope <laughs> Yeah, we might have hope, yes. But it's still, it's, it sounds like, you know, it's going to be a challenge, it's going to be difficult, obviously, because we dedicated and we won't make things happen, we'll make things happen. But, you know, um, hopefully people will not be discouraged from uh, maybe setting up uh, new projects, new organizations because of those uh, difficulties. Let's hope uh, maybe there will be, I don't know, some kind of uh, more network um, uh, initiatives to, to uh, I don't know, keep things going. That's, uh, that's really important. Uh, apart from mobility, what we're noticing here at Centrala, I don't know if you have any experiences, is the transport of artwork. So we already had, uh, because we had to return exhibition in, in early January, so it was stopped at the border and we had to kind of uh, catch up with lots of paperwork. It's, um, uh, we had uh, company cancelling insurance uh, for the artwork and uh, and there is increased uh, price of, uh, uh, of transport. So basically what we're doing at Centrala at the moment, we're putting on hold anything uh, or any exhibitions or plans which, which would include that because it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really difficult. And with COVID, it's really too difficult to predict what's going to happen on the borders and we don't want to get stuck. So this is very limiting of even if we will be able to reopen our gallery, we'll be very limited what we can show, what we cannot show. And we still don't know. It's like, it's the same like Clemene, we have to do our own research uh, and, and almost find out uh, what, what needs to happen and, and exactly in, with individual countries. So it's really uh, slightly discouraging at this stage. So, uh, but COVID on top of that, as we know, there was some kind of uh, issues on the borders. The borders can close at any time. So this year is, uh, uh, is, is not a true picture of what's, uh, what is going to happen after Brexit, but it's, it's, uh, it's quite, um, uh, yeah, it's quite, it's quite a lot. Hanna, you're uh, based in Sweden, so it's uh, from a Swedish point of view. Uh, are there any initiatives or any um, um, project aiming to kind of maybe keep uh, 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 connecting with, uh, with the UK and kind of post-Brexit? situation not as uh, not as i've heard of for the moment uh, unfortunately but uh, i really hope there will be uh, for sure yeah. yeah 
But the, I mean, the importance of networking and international networking is is crucial. I mean, it's uh, it's really valuable, and also for for young artists to be able to to travel and to build new audiences, for example. So uh, yeah, to keep in touch with colleagues, to uh, exchange ideas, knowledge, and uh, and so forth. That's uh, that's the strength of the uh, of the network. So. It's uh, it's super important to to keep those connections and to to foster them. Mm. So that's great to hear. It's encouraging that you're going to continue this this relationship. And I suppose the UK arts market is fairly important in Europe. So it's not something uh, to be given up lightly. And especially like film industry, music industries are really strong here. So I think it is quite um, uh, quite important. Uh, uh, but this is like all for established organization and established network. But do you guys think uh, maybe uh, how, what's the future of maybe young people or people who would like to establish and uh, who, because it's, uh, I think it's maybe in a way easier to maintain existing connections and existing network. And, but what for people and, uh, you know, what do you think? Or do you have an advice for people who would like to start new uh, connections and networks and uh, and this they they starting position is brexit world uh, where uh, there is so many unknown and so many uh, unclear uh, rules and regulations um, can i can i come back on that and i'm sure uh, these these are kind of widely felt views but if we look at the the split of the vote on the on the UK referendum to leave the European Union, it was very clearly divided between old and young, really clearly. Um, so there is absolute hope that this is a temporary part of our history, you know, that actually something will pass and something will change. Now, we find ourselves this year in the middle of this isolationist politics. So Europe is a is 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 a dirty word at the moment, unfortunately, with our government. But equally, the UK is pretty much a dirty word with many European governments. So we have to just let this pass. We have to just let this settle. I have a lot of hope that the younger generation will, at the very least, within the cultural field, bring us back into some of the programs that support culture. Um, there is a big noise that can be made by the universities around Horizon, for example, so they have louder voices, but if they can lead the way in some of those bigger ones, I'm hoping that the cultural sector will be able to follow. I do think, however, you're right in that those of us who are working internationally or across Europe now, these are relationships that aren't going to go away. Our friends are going to, not going to stop being our friends, our, our relationships are not going to end, these will continue. And I think there is going to be a change in how we develop those relationships. But I think there's an importance that for those of us who are already doing to do it even more and to invite as many people in as we can to, to share in what we are doing, which has been so normal to us, which is perhaps for a little while going to be harder for others. One question that I have actually to you is more um, learning from our experience with the tier five from artists that are from outside Europe in the past. So for example, we, it is much harder to bring in an artist from most African countries than for example, an artist from America maybe or Australia or even China. Um, um, normally the visas are not accepted and you have to try again and it is ex very expensive and the people have to travel huge amount of distances to actually get to the British High Commission and so on. Do you foresee that there will be an equal dealing with European countries or will there also be a sort of hierarchy in future? Um, so, I mean, uh, Clement, you seem to sort of more be able to look into the future. Alicia, you know, oh. your, your background, uh, particularly with uh, Eastern Europe, because I mean, at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, why we do the Brexit is because of to stop migration and uh, and is often seen for um, migration from Eastern Europe. So uh, um, people don't want to be, maybe spell that out in that way. But so this is a question I, I have, whether we will see an, this, the positive possibilities in, on, on unequal terms in Europe. I mean, I'll come in really quickly, Alicia, and then hand over to you. Um, we had a promise of, of leveling up 
that actually that this agenda would make it more equal for people from outside of Europe to be treated on an equal basis to those within Europe. That was part of the agenda in the lead up to the referendum and indeed beyond. It's, it's my feeling that we haven't leveled up, we've leveled down. So instead of it being more easy for others, it's actually going to be hard, I think, for many in this, what I hope to be a temporary transitional process until it all starts to turn better again. Yeah, I agree because uh, I don't think it's uh, the processes uh, of coming in is um, um, is going to be any easier for anyone, and uh, it's more difficult for uh, for other uh, other countries. I think in a way there is this point based uh, uh, system introduced, but still this point based system is still differentiate um, EU and non EU uh, countries. So it's not the whole Europe is not the same. Uh, there are slightly so it's not really making anything more democratic or even, and uh, and um, uh, the traditionally in the UK. Um, it seems like you know post-colonial countries are, are, are in favor uh, in, in international uh, projects. So I know I know from uh, we don't really bring people directly from Africa ourselves, uh, but we know organization work organization who, who do, and we know this is difficult. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, uh, there is another level of uh, of kind of unequal. <laughs> opportunities as colonial and non-colonial kind of world. The countries who are not former empires, they don't have this established links and uh, open programs. The UK has lots of various uh, initiatives really to, to connect. Uh, Birmingham is leading on, um, uh, um, on international project connecting with uh, South Asia. Uh, um, but nothing really from the region which is outside of the former uh, colonies. So um, that's something we sometimes like to challenge here that uh, uh, what uh, what UK used as an argument to even up opportunities of EU and non-EU, people do not really accept uh, um, uh, making opportunities equal for former colonial countries and, 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 and not. We will see with the uh, Commonwealth Games in 2022, we'll see how much emphasis will be on the former and how much money it will be dedicated to, to maintaining relationship with the former colonies uh, rather than other countries. Uh, so, um, so, you know, Global South uh, in, many, in many respects is not really being promoted, but we've noticed uh, uh, a hostile environment, uh, it's affecting uh, everyone and uh, we've noticed in a, in a post Brexit referendum increase of uh, rejected visa applications uh, from, uh, from various countries, uh, so it's not just making travel from Eastern Europe more difficult but uh, we had, uh, we hold, we work with the festivals who taking place at Centrala where they, they would have like he headliners stopped on the border, like despite having visa for instance. So which like, we didn't have many situations like this five or 10, eight years ago, but in the recent years, it's become a norm. So I, I completely agree. It's, it's, uh, uh, at the moment, all going into direct, in, in the direction of making life difficult for everyone, uh, not making it easier for for anybody, and uh, but maybe with the time we learn how to, as Klimene is saying, maybe there will be more resources we can base and find strength and 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 fight for for this uh, for this international uh, touring artist is not high on the agenda in the UK at the moment. But and and you other point, just the last thing. Yes, we we feel we we feel very per, you know Brexit for us is uh, it was very personal. Uh, slab in the face. Uh, we uh, we couldn't escape the feeling. We've been told many times this is because of us here, uh, Eastern Europeans. Uh, uh, so we know very well it's it's not about the whole Europe. It's it's, it's about this not so the 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 worst part of Europe. Uh, uh, so we're very very aware of this existing division into Eastern and Western Europe. Um, so, uh, so yes, uh, we expect to be more difficult for us, but it's not, I don't think anyone will, it's not compensated by increase of internationalism somewhere else. Mm. So two kind of bad things. Okay, so it's the time is up, we're slightly over, uh, it's our short uh, conversation, it's, um, we have maybe a minute to have like the last few words for our listeners, uh, any advice or maybe words of hope for the future? 
I mean, I can maybe maybe come into a couple just a couple of words to say, Alicia, how important conversations are, because we are all of us stepping into the unknown at the moment and being able to have these conversations repeatedly in different forums and with different people is 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 actually the way forward. Uh, and, and Hannah, the point of networks is so important and European networks and for UK for UK artists and cultural organizations, there are so many wonderful European networks who, who are still happy to have us as members, who are our friends, who want to work with us, who, who are not bound by national borders. And so go for it and just get out there, network and meet people, whether that's in the UK or abroad. Great. The only advice I can give, don't get um, torn down by the administration and really fight for your cause uh, and keep fight for the artists that you want to invite and don't give up on that. Sounds a bit simple, but that's, I feel is important. Uh, I mean, UK, as far as I understand it, it has been very su successful in uh, applying for Creative Europe and receiving a Creative Europe grants. So uh, in that aspect, of course, it's a, uh, it's a great loss, but there are, speaking about the uh, residencies, there are a lot of opportunities. Uh, if you go to res artists or trans artists, you find lots and lots of uh, residency opportunities that are not uh, dependent on the uh, Creative Europe programs. So yeah, there are, there are still opportunities. So as long as these uh, administrative issues uh, are solved, I think there. Uh, there, there will be, uh, of course, exchanges uh, in, uh, in the future as well. Lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, there is a little bit of optimism and the end, and we'll keep going, we'll not give up. Thank you, all my guests. Thank you, Hannah and Clemene and Claudia. It was great to chat to you. Let's uh, hopefully, uh, let's continue the conversation and not uh, uh, lose these connections. And for our listeners uh, out there, uh, please join us for uh, next conversation in two weeks time and we'll be talking on uh, about uh, festivals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you.